So every February, we celebrate Black History Month by learning about the exceptional achievements made by African Americans. And the next guest has made it his life's work to study African American history through DNA. sickle cell disease forum and welcome to City of Hope to those of you that are new here and not uh, employees. My name is Emily Bargoma and I am the current chair of Connecting People of African Descent uh, or CPAD and we are the black employee body here at City of Hope. We organized today's meeting in support of City of Hope's commendable efforts in securing a CIRM grant to study sickle cell uh, with the goal of curing it. Uh, we have a very exciting day full of talks and presentations from experts in the field and from community advocates for sickle cell disease patients. Um, and this is also going to include a, a fantastic keynote uh, Dr. Alexis Thompson, who is a giant in the field of sickle cell disease treatment and therapies. Uh, so without further delay, I would like to introduce you to our opening welcome, uh, Dr. Kim Ling um, Ashing. She is a professor and founding director of the Center of Community Alliance for Research and Education here at City of Hope Sea Care. Um, and she doesn't want me to list all her accolades, but <laughs> so Dr. Ashing. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Please stay here with me. This woman is really um, the brains and the bronze behind this forum. So I really want to say thank you to Emily and really give her a round of applause for doing this amazing work. So, welcome, welcome, welcome to City of Hope. This has been home for me for the past 13 years and um, it's one of the premier cancer and diabetes and chronic disease institute research and hospital providing clinical care. Our history is over a hundred years and we really started off as a place where those who are underserved and those who could not get treatment elsewhere came. We have grown into a comprehensive cancer center and um, we want to do more in terms of addressing the needs of our community. And so sickle cell, as Emily um, described, is one of those severe, but seriously understudied and underaddressed chronic disease in our globe and in our country. So I want to introduce to you um, a very special person who has been here at City of Hope for a year and a half. He's Dr. Rick Kittles. He has a very, very impressive CV, um, starting off about just a decade ago, really climbing the academic ladder because of his innovative work in African ancestry. So he has been the professor and is the director of our Division of Health Equities, our founding director. He has um, been at City of Hope leading the charge in health equity and diversity inclusion and a great support of CPAD and the work that we're doing here. So he has a very long, impressive CV. Um, his work focuses on prostate cancer and African-American men and really reaching out to the community here in Los Angeles and in our catchment area to do screening in our community, but as well as looking at the research in terms of looking at the genetic risk factors. So as he's getting ready, I welcome Dr. Rick Kittle to the podium. Uh, CPADS first uh, event for Black History Month. 
in celebration of Black History here at the City of Hope. Today's uh, workshop symposium is the product of some hard work and dedication by the three uh, leaders uh, at CPAC. And uh, today I'm going to moderate, so later on throughout the day I will highlight the leadership and, um, and alert you guys of, of who they are and what, they, what they've been doing. So today my charge is to talk about this uh, sickle cell dilemma, give you some overview and background of sickle cell disease and uh, issues uh, pertinent. But I, before I get started though, I wanna, I, I, I have to say this. These are very interesting, and very exciting times. Uh, we, in particular for sickle cell disease. And I think for those of us who have sort of been in the, in the, uh, in, in the fight, the good fight, as it relates to trying to increase funding, increase education and awareness and advocacy, uh, we can see sort of the, the, the climate, the environment is changing. And that's a good thing. I think there's a lot of reasons for that. One of the main reasons obviously is that the technology and the science has emerged and created these, these opportunities, which today we're gonna talk about. A lot of the different opportunities that, that the science and medicine, biomedicine has allowed us to, to, to do in terms of uh, treatment and actually some curative, potential curative effects. Another reason is we've had some strong, very strong advocacy. And it, it's fascinating because a lot of it has emerged from the West Coast as it relates to sickle cell disease. And so I have to acknowledge that and we're gonna have some uh, speakers today in the session dealing with uh, patient experience and advocacy talk about some of that, some of those experiences and how important that has been to uh, uh, the development of these emerging opportunities. But then also we have some serious dedicated um, commitment from the National Institutes of Health. So the federal government now is providing some serious money around sickle cell uh, disease uh, research treatment. This is something that we haven't seen in a very long time and I actually think, and I'm going to acknowledge this, a lot of it has to do with the director of NHLBI. So today we're going to talk about this genetic disease that's rather, in some cases, some have viewed it as a simple Mendelian disorder, just a simple mutation that has catastrophic effects. But it's not that simple. And those of us who know somebody who suffers from this, or you may suffer from it yourself, you know that it's not simple. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what it's like to be pumped with powerful narcotics hooked up to oxygen takes four times a year by the age of eight. I will tell you what it's like to have spent summers, spring breaks, Halloweens, and birthdays bed stricken Accompanied by books for friends, I will tell you how the television became my BFF because it was the only consistency I knew. I beat my potential into submission while this condition began to affect my academics. My self-esteem was screaming from my core because nothing was ever good enough. I felt stuck. So when I wake up every day, I live life in its entirety. As of today, I am officially Dr. Crystal J.L. Smith. Thank you. Um, so we reached the end of this incredible forum and I am so grateful for um, everyone that attended and for those of you that just stayed all the way to the end. So on behalf of CPAD, I would like to thank you all for attending today's forum. Today we heard fantastic presentations from sickle cell disease patients and sickle cell disease advocates. All of them given us insight into the disease from the point of view of the patient and the patient advocate. We want you to know that we hear you. We heard talented physicians and scientists share with us exciting developments in sickle cell disease treatments and studies. They showed us that there is really important work to be done. And apparently, President Trump also agrees with them because in February of 2018, he approved the sickle cell disease and other um, heritable blood disorder research surveillance prevention and treatment bill. 
Um, and this bill was written by Senators uh, Cory Booker and Tim Cook, and it passed. And I am very proud uh, to work at an institution that took advantage of this opportunity to apply for and be granted funding to study this disease. So this is why, in case you guys are wondering, why is a cancer center institution organizing a sickle cell disease? It's because we actually have funding to do so. Um, I hope this forum has renewed in you a sense of motivation as a patient to understand your disease better so that you could be more effective, an effective candidate for your health and your care. As an advocate, so that you can fight harder, Ms. Renee, yell louder, <laughs> question boldly, and educate your patients and their physicians better. As a scientist and physician, so that you can dig deeper and become more engaged. I am a graduate student here at City of Hope but I'm also an advocate and a sister. I've got these scars that so this is my, my motivation. I've got some rest in my blood. Here at City of Hope, I'm being trained to ask questions with intent and purpose. My PI challenges me every day to always pay attention to the unique perspectives and to explore deeper as a result. And for that, I am grateful. I am also grateful to City of Hope for giving CPAD the platform to organize this timely forum. To Dr. Rosenthal and his team for leading the charge. To Drs. Rosen and Caligiri for always saying, when I come up with things, sure, now let's talk about this. And then following up with, how can we help you? To the graduate school for giving students great opportunities to lead, to the director of HR, Ketty Duran, and her diversity and inclusion team for supporting CPAD's endeavors, to CPAD for always stepping up to the plate and always thinking outside the box for community engagement events. To Dr. Kittles for always making himself available to CPAD, for challenging us to do better, and he will let us know <laughs> if he doesn't like an idea. And then when we do, he supports us. And finally, I would be remiss if I do not take this opportunity to tell you about a little department at City of Hope called the Community Benefits Kindness Grant. And this department is led by a woman with the biggest heart, and even in her own personal trials and tri tribulations that she's experiencing, Nancy Clifton Hawkins goes out of her way to be available to CPAD for questions, last minute requests, and she's just always encouraging and motivating. And without her, I don't know how we would be able to put together some of these uh, community uh, engagement events. And we are, on behalf of CPAD, uh, I am incredibly grateful. Um, yes. I am also grateful to Biofilm Works. There are so many people that believe in what we were doing today that they just went above and beyond. Um, and Biofilm Works is recording everything and they were here while we were still arranging the room, and they're still here now, and I am incredibly grateful, Iman, for, for what you did. So, this concludes uh, the Sickle Cell Disease Forum at City of Hope. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs>